time for another Friday Reads, basically when I update you on what I finished from last time, what I'm currently working on, and what I want to get to next. I don't have a cat today, for that I am sorry, he is busy sleeping in his cat tree. I'll, maybe I'll post a photo for you guys so you can see how adorable he is and why I did not want to disturb him. But let's get into it. What did I finish? I did finish the two things I said I would, and that was The Innocence by Michael Crummy and Love After the End, a anthology of indigiqueer short stories in a speculative, apocalyptic, utopian future. So what did I think of those two that I finished them? Just really quick. I won't go into it as much as like wrap ups, but The Innocence I did have a book club for. This is my local book club. Every month we read a book and come together. And it was pretty much four to five stars for everyone there. I was definitely in the four star range. It was just beautiful. And I can objectively say not much happens. Like there are moments of tension that are based off survival scenarios that are, you know, kind of traditional like weather and just things like that. But for the most part, it's a very quiet, close, isolated story where not much happens. You're just following them go through the normal day to day of survival, these brother and sister. But I loved it and I read it really fast <laughs> for what it is. Like I was always really excited to get off work and then read that book on my commute, which is always a great sign for a book for me, is that it gets me excited to get on the bus because a lot of times like in the morning going to work, I don't want to get on the bus. And so if I have a book I'm excited to read, it really helps helps with that. And so that was definitely a book like that for me. There are trigger warnings for things. And I will leave that in my story graph review so you can go check that out and you can choose to reveal them or not. But it was really good, really lyrical. Um, I will say something that didn't bother me but bothered a lot of people in book club was that there's a lot of old style Newfoundland language in there because it's, it's historical fiction. It's based, I think, 18th, late 18th century. So there's a lot of words and phrases that people couldn't really easily look up and didn't really know. And for me, it wasn't a big issue, probably because of all the fantasy I read. I was just like, oh, I don't know that. Context clues, let's go. <laughs> so that was an issue for some people because it wasn't really a good dictionary to look up some of just like the phrases that like, you're like, I know that word, but I don't know that word in this context sort of thing. But it, it didn't really bother me. I thought its ending was great. I don't think I will do a whole review for it unless a lot of you guys really want one, but it was very enjoyable historical fiction. Happy to have it be my first read of 2021. And then I finished Love After the End, and Nikita and I spent like an hour and a half talking about it yesterday, as we've already been tweeting to each other, like on Twitter DMs about each story, and then we just spent an hour and a half talking about it. And it was a pretty great, solid, speculative fiction collection for me. I don't think any of the stories are gonna be standout favorites as I like go through the world but something it reminded me of was when I read The Cuban's Guide to Quantum Santeria I just had so much joy in seeing the casual representation of Latinx culture in sci-fi stories like just the act of having a Puerto Rican physicist was so exciting to me so I feel like that casual like inclusiveness of these cultures and like some of the things that were met things that are mentioned that maybe I couldn't like have this connection to would be really important from someone with that background. And there was one story that I really, really liked. I It was the last one in the collection, very Black Mirror. I do suggest checking it out if you like know nothing about what being two-spirited means and you like sci-fi stories. I think it's really fun and it's, it's pretty short. It's like only 200 pages. And so now what am I working on? I'm still making my way through Malazan. I am now further. I think last time I talked to you guys, I had only read up to book two. I was in book two and now I'm in the tail end of book four. In book four I'm liking a lot more than books two and three. I did not mind book three but it's just like I feel like there was a lot of setup and sometimes it, it's funny there would be some like world building dumps from certain characters that I thought were kind of dry <laughs> which is so weird because everything else has been handled in such an interesting way and there's still so much intrigue and I'm trying to see how it all comes together and I now have a better sense of why certain pieces are on this chessboard, but it feels like a book where I'm looking at a chessboard and I'm not supposed to be invested in any one piece of it. I'm trying to figure out through all these perspectives what game is being played. And there are a lot of players and there's a lot of discord between a lot of players. So it's really intriguing. But I was talking to Lena from Effic Sufficiently Advanced Lena and she was asking, you know, how do we feel about it? And I'm like, I am liking it but it's not a bingeable book for me, except book one was very bingeable. 
the other books within this book, that's what they call parts in Molasson, <laughs> have not been as bingeable. Like I'll read a chapter or a chapter and a half a day and be completely like fine and don't want to keep going. And I don't know why that is. Like I'm just, it's a weird experience because I'm still enjoying it. It's not, but it's like so slow paced and I just take it in little chunks and I'm completely fine with it. It's very weird <laughs> experience right now. And I'm curious to see if it like ramps up at the end and basically just how the narrative pacing progression is going to go. But I love a lot of the stuff happening. Like I like thinking about it and talking about it more than reading it, which isn't like a negative either. I don't know, I have a spoiler vlog about the whole book that I'm going to have up and I am going to do a review for this book. So it, it, it's a very mixed bag. And I am also, as I said, I started Mask of Mirrors. This is the arc for the month and I really like it, guys. I am already, oh, 55% of the way through, I think is what my Kindle said. And I'm going to be reading it right after filming this check-in. I have been dying to read it. I'm like walking to the bus stop reading it, which I do not do often because it's cold outside and my hands get cold, even like with gloves. So the fact that I'm like doing that to get extra reading time in should tell you how much I'm liking it. I now know more about it. So I can, I can tell you guys, you have Ren, who is a con artist and she grew up on the streets and she has this con to try and basically sneak into the good graces of this family who is not in the good graces of higher society. And we'll leave it there. It is a world with, whose magic system is very subtle and the world building it is very focused on style and clothing. And it has a lot of elements that I didn't know I needed or wanted in fantasy. Like there's a lot of what I'll call ballroom political drama. Um, very similar to if you've read Mistborn, what Vin was doing some of the time in that story. So it's been really fun. Like the writing style is so easy for me to just blow through. One thing that's like a minor con, but normally it'd be a major con. So it's not a big deal for me right now is the chapters are really long. Like they're like 30, 40 page chapters, which normally I'm just like, ah, oh, that's so long. My brain can't like focus for that long, but it's it's been going great. Like I'm just, I'm completely absorbed and invested in all these characters, things are happening, and the narrative's playing with me. I know it's playing with me. There's like this mysterious character and you don't like know who's the guy behind the mask. There's a lot of masks, mask of mirrors. And I just keep thinking it has to be this person, but it can't be because you were too obvious about it. So you're playing with me book. And I'm, I don't know, like, uh, it's just really fun. So I will have a review for that. Hopefully I'm thinking the Monday before it's released. So in like three days for you guys. <laughs> I film these on Wednesdays, full disclosure. It's just what has to be done to make sure everything gets edited and captioned and thumbnails, all, all the things. But I'm really liking it, like a lot. Like, might need to get a physical copy a lot. So <laughs> that, that's what I can say about that. And what else have I been reading? Lonesome Dove, have not made a lot more project progress on that. I mean, I've made progress. What I am nervous about is everyone keeps telling me it's so dark and one sad thing has happened so far that isn't even maybe that sad to me. So I'm like terrified. And even Ryan's keeps telling me, and this is the book Ryan told me to read. It's like, oh, it's a dark book. And I'm like, what is going to happen on this trip to Montana? But I only listen to it when I'm walking to and from the bus, which is only like 40 minutes to an hour a day. So, and that's like, if I don't get distracted by like a podcast I was finishing up. So I haven't been like prioritizing it, but it's been like really fun to take in small doses. I, let's see, I don't think I've talked about my favorite characters. I do feel like, I think it's Captain McRae. He's called Augustus. He's, he's hysterical and the audiobook's great because he's always described as talking really loud. And that, that comes through, not to the point where it like hurts your ears, but it's just like, he has such a very unique speech pattern that I think the actor really brought to life. And I don't know, I've just, everyone I've met is just such a vivid character. I don't know if so much I think that they're real. I don't think I can relate to this time period and what it would mean to live out West like this. But I really have enjoyed every little vignette whenever we get a tiny piece of backstory or how this person thinks and responds to the world. It's, it's character work is really top notch. And so yeah, I think that's everything. I am still slowly working on A Court of Wings and Ruin. Or is it Winds and Ruin? You know, I don't. But <laughs> that one's kind of been on the back back burner. Like I don't think I picked it up because the Mask of Mirrors, guys. 
the mask of mirrors is so good like like this isn't my review i haven't finished the book but like i'm so excited to go read it more like i have been able to read it for hours at a time books that get me into that mood like ah oh, it's really really exciting and yeah so that's the things that i'm working on after i finish the mask of mirrors and I want to I want to try and then focus only on this to get Malazan done. But I'll probably pick up Ship of Magic, or um, I have it right over here actually, Ugh. the Girl in the Tower, because those are two that I want to get to. And it'll kind of just depend on if Malazan like picks up pace, then I'm going to just like hunker down and get to this. But if it keeps being the same slow pace, which is fine, then I want to pick up something that's faster paced, and that's probably the Girl in the Tower because it's kind of short. And I, it's a reread, so it's like easy. And with rereads, I don't mind pausing them and focusing on other things like when I like have to. <laughs> also, I really love my new copies. They just make me so happy. So I think those are all the book thoughts I have. If you want have any questions about my book thoughts, let me know. Um, also, if there's anything, like I said, I wasn't going to do a standalone review for The Innocence or Love After the End, I'll for sure bring them up in my wrap up at the end of the month. But if you did want a standalone review, let me know because I can do that. And also I am looking into setting up a Patreon for a book club thing. But I wanted to like find out if you guys cared if it had one or two tiers. Because if you didn't want to be a part of the book club but still wanted to support, I didn't want to maybe necessarily have you pay the same tier. Because for book club, that's a little bit more work because I have to read the book, set up the like interface and like everything. But if you just wanted to be a part of the discord but didn't want to be a part of a book club and still wanted to support the channel, I can maybe make two tiers. I don't know, I'm still learning about stuff. Patreon has like multiple levels and uh, the mid level lets you have two tiers, but it, they get more of the money, which is fine. But I just, you know, if people didn't care if there was two tiers or one tier, I just wanted to know. And chances are, if you made it to the end of this video, you're the person I want to hear from because you listen to me ramble for way too long. I'm just kidding. I'm really glad you guys are here. It's so much fun getting to talk about books with you all every week. And I guess for the end of this one, leave a mask in the description, which I'm definitely going to have be the emoji for the review. Spoiler alert. And with that, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.